Hello all of my lovely art students! So this week we are exploring the element of art space and we will be drawing a landscape of a farm. Now you will notice that this project's video seems very long, it's almost 30 minutes, but to be honest, the last 10 minutes of the video are completely optional. I'm just going to be talking a little more in detail in some of the things that I've done in my art. So feel free to listen or feel free to turn the video off once you have finished your project. Completely up to you. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, we are talking about the element of art space. And the definition of space in art is actually pretty simple and straightforward. All it is, is the area above, below, within, and around an object or objects in your art. And to kind of explain that a little further and to maybe have it make more sense, we're going to look at this piece of art, this landscape that we did for a past project. And we, as artists, have to create the illusion of space when we are working with two-dimensional art. And two-dimensional art is when we're making art that's flat on paper. So like when we're painting and we're drawing, it's not three-dimensional. It's not like a sculpture, like when we're working with clay. So I have to, as an artist, use the tips and tricks that I learn in art class to be able to show that there is depth in my art, that there is objects that are close and objects that are far away. That is part of what space is in art and that's the part that we will be focusing on with the project that we'll be doing. So to create that illusion, what I did and what you guys did is we made these flowers very large and we put them at the bottom of our page. Those two things combined show us that these flowers are very close. And by making the hills smaller, or really actually the same size as these flowers and slightly higher than the flowers, those two things tell us that these hills are farther away than these flowers because our brain knows that uh, hills are not the same size as flowers. But because we're artists and we're already smarties, we know that if we draw the hills the same size as the flowers, then our brain tricks us into thinking that these hills are farther away than the flowers. So those are the kind of things we do to create the illusion of space. And with this project, I'm just going to give you another little trick that you can add to create that illusion. For this project, you just need your basic drawing materials, such as a pencil, a Sharpie, a pen, whatever you have on hand. And then if you would like to color whatever you want to color with. And as I said before, we are drawing a landscape, this time showing a farm. And to start with our landscape this time, we are going to draw a horizontal line that goes across our paper. And again, a horizontal line is a line that goes left to right. And it can be straight, it can be curved, it is up to you. Mine is slightly curved. And what this line is, is our horizon line. And if you're in second grade, you might remember hearing this word before when we talked about form. For our landscape, what our horizon line is, is the line that separates our land from our sky, okay? And the next step that we're going to do for this landscape is I want to draw the rows that my crops are in. I'm going to start by just drawing a little dot right here. This dot is super important because this dot is going to be where all our, our crop rows are coming out of. And I know that might sound confusing, that's okay. But pretty much what I mean by that is I'm going to start by drawing a diagonal line. So a line that's slanted that goes from this dot to the bottom of my paper like that. And then I'm going to draw a second one that again goes from this dot to the bottom of my paper. And I want my 
line to be as straight as possible. So if you want to use a ruler or a book or something to help you, that is perfectly fine. I'm going to continue though, drawing that same line over and over again as I go across my paper. Kind of like when we were drawing our sun in this landscape where our lines slowly came out of our sun. We're doing something very similar, just this time coming from this dot. And it's okay if your line goes off the edge of the paper instead of the bottom of the paper, the side. You just don't wanna have your lines go past the horizon line, this line right here. So I could go back over here and draw another one. Those are all of my rows of crops, whatever plants I'm going to be drawing. And I left this space a little open because this is where I'm going to put my farmhouse. The next step is I need to decide what crops do I want to draw on each of these rows. Hmm. You know what? I'm I know it's not quite fall, but I just really really want to draw some pumpkins. So I am going to draw some pumpkins in this crop row right here. And to start I'm going to draw my pumpkin that is closest to me. So just like when we were drawing our landscape, we keep coming back to this one, our landscape with our hills and sun. So just like we did here with our flowers, I'm going to draw the pumpkin that is closest to me larger than the pumpkins that I'm going to draw as they get farther and farther away. So I'm just going to start by drawing a kind of oval circle for my pumpkin like this. And then I wanna add some of that texture, so I'm just gonna draw some curved lines, kinda of like when we did our cactus. And then I need my pumpkin stem. And you don't have to do pumpkins, you can do whatever crops you want. Then I wanna draw my second pumpkin, and this pumpkin's going to be farther away, so I'm gonna draw it slightly smaller, and I'm going to stay inside this row. And then I do it again. Again, drawing my third pumpkin smaller than my second one. And I go all the way until I reach this point right here. So I went ahead and just traced it in Sharpie so you can see them a little better. I wasn't sure how well my pencil lines are picking up on um, the camera since I am using my phone. And I'm just gonna go in and add some details really quick, some vines to my pumpkins, because pumpkins grow on vines. I'm going to continue just drawing with Sharpie at this point again. I just am always nervous that uh, my pencil lines aren't showing up on the camera. So the next step is I can just pick the next set of crops that I want to draw. What do I want to draw right here? And you know what? I You know how much I love flowers, so I'm going to put some flowers right next to my pumpkins because why not? I say so. It's my art. You can do whatever you want, whatever crop or plant you want to draw. But I need to make sure as I'm drawing my flowers that my flower in front is very large. And then as I move away and closer to that point, they get smaller and smaller. And then I pick my next crop. I am just going to draw strawberry bushes. These are going to be super cartoony. So you guys, um, I'm sure will realize these look nothing like real life strawberry bushes, but that's okay because it's art. And so we can be a little creative. So you'll notice as I move farther away too and add more strawberries, it's going to get less and less detailed and you're going to see less and less strawberries because as things move farther away in space, we aren't able to see as far and so we can't see all those little details. See, they just become like itty bitty dots as I move farther away. I am going to draw some carrots. Now normally carrots are in the ground so you don't see the bottom of the carrot. But for the sake of art, I'm going to draw the full carrot and I'm just gonna have them like laying on the ground. Maybe the farmer picked them and left them there. I don't know, maybe for the rabbits cause he's just a super nice farmer. She's just a super nice farmer. And this is not 100% correct sizing because obviously we know carrots are not as big as um, these bushes, but you know what? That's okay. 
that's okay. They're just humongous, giant carrots. They had a very good year this year for growing carrots. Now I'm just going to move on to the next row. I'm going to move on to blueberries. I am feeling like eating some blueberries right now. And blueberries also grow on a bush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same kind of bush I did here, where it's almost like I'm drawing a cloud. And then I'm just going to draw some dots in there that I will color as blue. And now for my last row. So I am going to again take some creative liberty and the reason I'm doing this is to show you what you can do with your farm so you don't feel like you have to again draw exactly like real life. I'm going to just draw apples. Apples grow on trees. I'm not going to draw the trees. I'm just going to draw apples along my row, just kind of like I did with carrots. So not sticking with real life, but who doesn't like good apples? So I'm going to draw apples. And another thing I'm going to show you is, I remember how we did the eye shine with the bear? Well, apples are also very shiny. So what you can do is you can add a little glare on your apple. Because I don't know if you ever noticed, if you hold your apple up to the light, you can see the light reflecting off of it. So all I do is I do a curved line like that, and then another curved line like that, going the same direction. Kind of like we're drawing a crescent moon. So I finished drawing all my crops. You can see I also went in and I added some texture where there would be grass and the crops end, the plants end. And what I'm going to do now is I'm coming over to this side and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to draw the farmhouse now or the barn. And it's up to you how you want to draw yours. You can draw just a normal house. That is fine. Maybe it's somebody who just likes to grow plants as a hobby. You can draw a barnyard. Maybe it is a professional farmer and this is how he makes his living. It's up to you and what uh, story you want to tell in your art. I'm going to keep mine um, pretty simple, I think. And I'm also going to show you how to draw a three dimensional house um, to create that illusion of space some more. And it is up to you if you wanna to try to do it my way or if you would like to just do it your way, your choice. So to start to draw my three dimensional house, I'm going to draw a vertical line, a line that goes up and down like this. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Then I'm going to draw a diagonal line at the bottom of that vertical line that just goes like that. And I'm going to make it about that long. It's up to you how long you wanna make it, however long you make it. If you make it longer, it'll make your building look wider. Then I'm going to draw another diagonal line coming out of that same spot, just going the opposite direction like that. Then I'm going to draw a vertical line, again, a line that goes up and down, that just goes from the bottom of this line to about right there. It's up to you. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here, another vertical line. Then I'm going to draw a, another diagonal line. And I want to draw the diagonal line I'm gonna to try to draw it exactly like this diagonal line, the best I can. So, like that. And then see, I didn't draw this line long enough, so I'm going to draw it up and connect. See? Then I do the same thing, where I wanna draw another diagonal line, and I want it to follow this line the best I can. Like that. Now I want to draw a triangle and this is going to be the bottom of my triangle. So I need to draw the other two sides. Side number one, side number two. Now I need to draw a diagonal line that follows this diagonal line right here. Like that. And then I just close my shape with a line, like that. So it's a little difficult, it's 
a little tricky. Do not feel like you have to do this. I just wanted to show you how. I didn't get really into the technical technique of how to do it. I just kind of drew it line by line so it's not doesn't look perfect. Um, but this is just something fun you can practice because when we get to third grade, uh, we will be learning how to draw three-dimensional buildings the correct way, the like more advanced way. And then you can just start adding the details to your barnyard. I'm just going to now start adding details around my farm landscape. So it's up to you what you want to add and what you want to do if you just want to call it a day. So again, you can see I went in and just added some details. I added some animals. So these are supposed to be horses, just take my word for it. Um, but I needed to make sure to draw them super small so that way you can tell that they are very far away. I have a little pig right here. So the pig is actually, I drew it bigger than the horses. So you know that pig is closer than the horses, um, creating that illusion of space. And you know, I have my house, I have bushes. I made a mistake as you can probably tell and see that I forgot because even I forget things, to draw the bushes that are supposed to be closer to me, uh, larger than the closest, than the bushes that are farther away from me. I tried to fix it up a little bit and it is what it is and that's okay. You know, sometimes not everything turns out perfect. Do some cloud sun. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get coloring. And there is my landscape of a farm fully colored. Now, I did three things to show the illusion of space. The first thing was I drew things larger if they were closer to us. I moved them up the page or I drew them higher up the page as they got farther away from us. And also they are all moving towards this point that we originally drew in the beginning of our project. And I didn't tell you what this point was called. It's called a vanishing point, which again, if you're in second grade, we did talk about that, but I know it was a long time ago. But in art, one of the techniques is you create a vanishing point and then things steadily move towards it to look like they're getting farther and farther away. At this point, if you want, you can go ahead and turn off the video. But what I wanna do is right now talk to you guys about some of the decisions I make while coloring, why I do certain things in my art um, while I'm drawing and coloring that you guys maybe don't know or notice or realize that I'm thinking or doing. So that way maybe you guys can also start to think about it while you draw. Because a lot of times you guys are, in when we're physically in class, you're like, I don't, why does yours look that way and mine looks looks this way? Or why why do I feel like mine doesn't look quite right? Or why, why does yours look better? And I'm always like, well, I am older than you. I've had a lot more practice. And through my practice, I am able to make certain decisions and be able to do certain things while I am making art. First of all, let's just start, start right here. Let's start in the grass. I am using crayons, and this also works with color pencils. When you color with fun things like crayons, not markers, this does not work for markers, you can affect the color of the material by how hard or light you are pressing on it. So I can make a really nice dark green like this, or I can make a nice light green like this. 
And the way I do this is I'm pressing really, really hard on the paper or I'm barely touching the paper. So when I went to color the grass, I colored really light. I barely touched that paper to make a nice, um, just a nice light green. But then what I did was I wanted to add some texture and I already had some texture with these Sharpie lines right here, but I wanted to add a little extra texture, just a little, little extra sparkle to my art. So I went in and I pressed down really hard on my crayon while drawing these like kind of squiggly zigzag lines that we would usually use for grass. And you can kind of see I did similar things in other areas of my art. I did it here in the roof where I made a pattern by coloring really dark, pressing hard, and then kind of pressing light, and then hard, and then light. And then I went in and I added some extra oomph by adding some of that darker brown down here. So little things like that I think about while making art. Another thing you might have noticed that I've done is I added a pattern with my bushes. So I did light green, dark green, light green, dark green. The reason I did that isn't just because, you know, I love patterns. It's because if I had colored this all this one green or this one green, you wouldn't be able to tell that as well. You wouldn't as be able to tell as well that these are different bushes, that they're different plants. So by using a light green and a dark green, two different greens, not just pressing hard or light, but completely different greens, you're able to easily tell that these are, oh, a bunch of different bushes. And then it just makes it even more clear that they're getting smaller and smaller as they move farther away. So it helps again show that space. Some other little things I did that maybe you didn't notice is I did a couple different blues with my blueberries. Again, just to add a little more interest because not all blueberries are the same color. It would have been fine if I used all the same blue, but it's just a little extra something something I added. And then there's just um, two or three more things I'll point out really, really fast. You can notice with the carrots maybe and the pumpkins, I actually used two different oranges. I used a light orange and I used a dark orange. So I colored it with this and then I went in with this dark orange to kind of add a shadow. So it looks like the sun is actually hitting the carrots. Another thing I did kind of along that same idea was I went in with actually a black crayon and I went in and I added little shadows. You know, when we're standing out in the sun and we look behind us, we can, or in front of us, depending on where the sun is, we can see our shadow on the ground. Well, same with everything else. So I just added little shadows underneath my carrots, underneath my pumpkins and everything. I don't have a lot of space, so I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I was a little sloppy with it, but Honestly, I think that's okay. It's not like I was scribbling all out of the lines. Another thing I just wanted to point out is, I, why do you guys think I use these three colors with my flowers? I can promise you it's not just because I like blue and pink. The reason I picked these three colors is because I used these three colors with my other plants. I looked at my art and I thought, hmm, I have these two blues over here and they aren't really anywhere else in my art. So you know what? I'm going to use them also over here with my flowers. I looked at these other plants and I was like, hmm, I could have either used this red or this pink in my flower. And I just, just because I wanted to, I chose to use this kind of more pinkish red. So that's why I use those three colors. And the reason I didn't pick orange, even though we have orange in our plants is because I was going to be right next to the pumpkins. So I didn't want my flowers and my pumpkins to maybe start to get a little mixed up. I want it to be very clear that these are my flowers and these are my pumpkins. So that's why I use those three colors. Those are the kind of thoughts that I'm having while I'm coloring. One last thing I wanna point out is actually a mistake that I made. So these clouds, I'm not loving these clouds. I'm, I, they're okay. I'm not super happy with how they turned out, but I wanna explain to you what I was thinking while I was making them and why I made the choices that I did. First, I had left the clouds for last and they were the only thing in my art not colored. They were the only thing that was white. And to me, I was like, that was kind of odd. 
I didn't really like how it looked. So I was like, hmm, well, what color should I use? I don't have a gray crayon. So I tried to color it with black, but coloring really, really light, so maybe it would look like it was gray. And that looked okay, but I still wasn't a huge fan. So then I thought in my head, okay, well, I colored the windows blue, and really the windows should be white. So maybe I'll try something similar with the clouds. And yeah, didn't really like how that turned out either. I mean, it's okay. So then I tried to color over it with white to see if maybe I could make it a little bit of a lighter blue and it kind of worked, but not quite. So as a result, I have these bright blue clouds and you know what? That's okay because what I have taken away from this is it was a learning experience. So will I do this again? Will I color my clouds like this again? Probably not. How I'm going to do it next time, I don't know. It's something I now need to think about because now I know what does not work. So now I need to figure out what does work. So it is okay if your art doesn't turn out exactly how you want it to or how maybe you have envisioned it or have it in your mind. Anyway, so I just wanted to go over that with you guys because you guys are super smart and very bright art students who are making just absolutely lovely art and these are just some extra things that you can start thinking about while you're creating art even if you are in first and second grade the sooner you start the more time you have to get better pretty much because i can promise you guys um a lot of you draw a lot better than i drew when i was your age i was not the most amazing art student to be 100% honest with you guys. I only ever had my art hung up once in elementary school and that was in fifth grade. So uh, that is why I am just always extremely impressed and amazed by the art you guys create in my class. And I cannot wait to see what kind of farms you make for your project and what crops and plants you draw. Until next week.